The University Church of St. Mary the Virgin is an Oxford church situated on the north side of the High Street. It is the centre from which the University of Oxford grew, and its parish consists almost exclusively of university and college buildings. St. Mary's possesses an eccentric Baroque porch, designed by Nicholas Stone, facing High Street, and a spire which is claimed by some church historians to be one of the most beautiful in England. Radcliffe Square lies to the north, and to the east is Cat Street. The 13th century tower is open to the public for a fee, and provides good views across the heart of the historic university city, especially Radcliffe Square, the Radcliffe Camera, Brassenus College and All Souls College. A church was established on the site, at the centre of the Old Wall City, in Anglo-Saxon times. Records of 1086 note the churches previously belonging to an estate held by Aubrey de Cousy, likely Ifley, and the parish including part of Littlemore. In the early days of Oxford University, the church was adopted as the first building of the university, congregation met there from at least 1252, and by the early 13th century it was the seat of university government, and was used for lectures and the award of degrees. Around 1320 a two-story building was added to the north side of the chancel the ground floor became the convocation house used by university parliament, and the upper story housed books bequeathed by Thomas Cobham, Bishop of Worcester, which formed the first university library. When Adam de Brome became rector in 1320 the church's fortune became linked to what would later become Oriel College. In 1324 Brome founded St. Mary Hall, and appropriated the church's rectory house, including small tithes, oblations and burial dues for the college, an act confirmed in 1326 by the bishop, Henry Burgish, after Brome had got Edward II's patronage to refound the college. Brome diverted the revenues of the church to his college which thereafter was responsible for appointing the vicar and providing for chaplains, to celebrate the daily services in the church. Early provosts of the college, were inducted into their stall in the church, and until 1642 fellows were required to attend services on Sundays and holy days. St. Mary's was the site of the 1555 trial of the Oxford Martyrs, when the bishops Latimer and Ridley and the Archbishop Cranmer, were tried for heresy. The martyrs were imprisoned at the former Bicardo prison near St. Michael at the North Gate in Corn Market Street, and subsequently burnt the stake just outside the city walls to the north. A cross set into the road marks that location on what is now Broad Street, the nearby Martyrs Memorial, at the south end of St. Giles, commemorates the events. A section cut out of Grandma's pillar remains from the morning of Grandma's death on 21 March 1556, when he was brought to the church for a sermon from Henry Cole, provost of Eton College, who on Mary I's instructions, spelled out the reasons why he must die. Cranmer stood on a stage, the corner of which was supported by a small shelf cut from the pillar opposite the pulpit, withdrawing his recantations of his reformed beliefs. He swore that when he was burnt, the hand which had signed them would be the first to burn. Until the 17th century, the church was used, not only for prayers, but also for increasingly rowdy graduation and degree ceremonies. This phenomenon, the notion that sacrifice is made equally to God and Apollo, in the same place, where homage was due to God and God alone was repugnant to William Lord, Archbishop of Canterbury who in the 1630s initiated the erecting of a separate building for these ceremonies. This project was cut short by the fall of Lord, and the outbreak of the English Civil War, but after the Restoration it was revived, and carried through by John Fell, Dean of Christ Church, who commissioned Christopher N. to erect what became the Sheldonian Theatre. Thereafter, the church was reserved for religious worship only.